Welcome to Compliance Commando. Here you will learn battle-tested compliance strategies for successful advisors. Today we're covering part three in a five-part series, Brace for Impact 2018, five things you must learn from the movie Sully. In the last segment, we learned that engineers are not pilots, you will be second-guessed during any type of complaint, and there isn't one right product to avoid complaints. Let's continue on here to lesson number three. Our job is to investigate how a plane ended up in the Hudson River. On the Hudson River. Look, isn't it a little early in the year to go fishing? Seeking the facts is hardly fishing, Mr. Skiles. Okay, then here's the most important fact. There's only two people who know what happened in the cockpit that day, and I'm one of them. And we appreciate your perspective. Why do you even think we're here today? It's because Captain Sullenberger did not head back to LaGuardia. Look, I just finished training on the A320, and I can tell you the only reason the plane operated as well as it did, that the aircraft could land anywhere, is because Captain Solenberger turned on the auxiliary power unit. He was simply following the QRH. No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't following proper procedure at all. And I know because I had the QRH in my hands. If he had followed the damn rules, we'd all be dead. Now, before everyone gets uptight here, I am not telling you to break all the rules. Compliance officers, take a deep breath. We're all going to be okay. It's very, very important that you follow the rules in our industry to prevent yourself from ending up in a world of hurt, dealing with regulators, dealing with arbitrators, dealing with complaints. However, I still ask the question, what is the speed limit? Because in our industry, there is so much gray area between what is able to be done versus what is the actual rules. That gray area leads to the possibility of having so much responsibility, so much liability that ends up on the shoulders of the financial advisor. If something doesn't go right in the client's portfolio in the future, they can turn around, sue you, and it's all your fault. And I just don't feel that's, that's right. If we take a look at the performance of what Sully actually did here, it was amazing. Uh, it was completely unprecedented. He bet his life on it. He got that plane down safe in the river. Everybody walked away. This man should have been a hero. Um, he did a great job, but he ended up going through this NTSB, similar to what many financial advisors have gone through with complaints from clients or investigations from FINRA in our industry. But why? Let's, let's look at the situation that we're in. Why are we calling this segment Brace for Impact 2018? If we go back here and take a look at what the market has done for the last nine years here or so, we, we've had nothing but an up market. There's been a couple little pullbacks, there's been downs, and the media blows that out of proportion. You look back into 15 and 16 there, and there was a little bit of a dip. We had a little bit in, in 2011, but the market for the most part has just flown up. We've had the greatest bull market in history. Uh, we had the longest period of time without a 5% pullback uh, in history. It was 403 days without a day in the markets losing 5%. Um, keep in mind, that's a little bit over uh, a year. You know, we're looking at uh, 13 months, 14 months there. So on average, the market does a 5% pullback about once a year. And what is 5% of 24,000? Well, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 points. So the media blows this 1,000 point loss, the biggest point loss in the history, uh, out of the, making it such a big deal. But when you look at it on a percentage basis, it isn't that big of a deal. Um, but if it was 1,000 points when the Dow was at 8,000, that would be a huge different scenario. So keep in mind, the clients get this financial amnesia because the market continues to go up and up and up. But if we take a look here about 2008, you know, we've, we've been here before. We saw it go from 12,500 all the way down to, you know, almost 7,500. And, and the clients have been through that. Uh, they just forget because we've had this historic bull run. And when clients forget, they come back and they get upset and they look at us and say, well, wait a minute. How could this ever happen in my portfolio? So again, brace for impact. This type of stuff is going to come back. And based on the type of world that we're living in today, where it's always somebody's fault, um, be prepared. There's a good chance that you will receive a complaint. Good uh, chance that you will find yourself in some sort of adversity here. And 
it's easy to blame it on the clients as well um, but let me ask you this let's say if you came home from work today and this is what your living room looked like you're underwater halfway up to the walls now I'm sure this would be a tragedy I'm sure everyone would freak out I know I would I know my wife would but let me ask you a question here how much would this cost you you see you probably carry homeowners insurance on your home right but what exactly would this cost you with your homeowners insurance what is your deductible on your homeowners insurance that TV that's half underwater there would that get brand new replacement for that TV or would you get a prorated uh, value of that TV because it's seven years old uh, how much is this a flood from nature do you actually have flood insurance or was this from a pipe what about all of those technicalities within inside your homeowners insurance policy you see we're in that industry or we're close to the homeowners insurance industry but yet we probably don't know all those details in our policy so it's really easy for a, a, a client who isn't in our industry to get caught up and not really understand what they have after they purchased it the difference is here would we go back to our homeowners insurance agent and sue them because we didn't remember what was in our policy no probably not but if we take a look at what's happening in our industry we're seeing that becoming a bigger bullseye on our back when things happen and it's a scary world because I think clients really only remember three things they remember what they invested when we started this account I had a hundred thousand dollars they remember the high watermark they remember that at one point in time this portfolio was worth two hundred thousand dollars and they realize today it's worth a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so those are really about the three things that clients remember about their investment portfolio they don't remember the paperwork they filled out the risk tolerance survey that they took the the information that they gave you about their risk tolerance their emotions to investing those type of things for the most part this is what clients remember so when the markets start going crazy and your phone starts ringing what can you do to help protect yourself first off I believe communication in uncertain times communication eliminates most reasons to complain if you're talking to your clients if you're answering the phone if you're easing their worries hopefully they can sit tight relax and and deal with what's going on in the markets because they're not always going to remember what you said but they'll definitely remember how you made them feel did you ignore them did they feel like wait a minute why isn't he answering my call why isn't he returning my call is he got something to hide is he trying to dodge me or did you answer the phone put them at ease give them some advice uh, take their emotions to to your heart and and really be that guidance that they're looking for when they hired you so I would recommend three things right away number one answer that phone uh, just let them know you're not asleep at the wheel you're on top of things you know what's going on and you have a plan that's created just for this and this is nothing that you didn't expect would happen at some point the market doesn't go straight up forever reach out do a group message send an email to all your clients send a mailer to all your clients make a phone call to all of your clients but uh, another easy way save time how about you change your voicemail message to let them know that you're on it hi this is John I know the markets are going crazy right now and I'm getting a lot of calls sorry I couldn't take your call right now but when I base my plans for my clients we plan for times like this uh, your portfolio is diversified whatever you've done explain to them how you build your portfolios that you're prepared for time like this and leave that on your voicemail message maybe that'll save you having to talk to everyone personally maybe they'll say yeah this is Steve yeah you're right I was watching CNBC and I was a little nervous about what's going on but you're right I'm good don't worry about giving me a call back save yourself some time but again when when things get crazy and clients start freaking out I wonder where's their accountability it's it's a scary world that we're living in when we go back to the video the quote that really grabbed me by the throat in this one is there are only two people in that cockpit there are only two people that understood what's going on there and there's only two people that when you're meeting with your client that are trying to work together to get this plan put in place to solve their needs I feel that most advisors aren't 
out there trying to rip off their clients, harm their clients. They're trying to provide good solutions for their clients. And there's a lot of data to back that up. But ultimately, again, where's the accountability that falls back on their clients? They need to know what and remember what they agreed to at the time of purchase. You know, in an airplane, there's this little thing called a black box. And this is what it looks like. And I have no idea why it's called a black box when it's orange. And But anyway, uh, there's this a black box in the cockpit and whenever you have a plane crash they're always spending all their time looking for the black box why because this records everything that happened in that uh, cockpit they're looking to see what caused this plane crash who was at fault here so what about your clients if you were dealing with your clients and you had a little black box in your office would that help you in any way um, would that help hold your clients accountable to what they asked for when you did their planning and hold you accountable to what you promised them or sold them or solved them or planned for them? Would this help you? What if you had some sort of accountability where you would say, Mr. Client, what questions do you have here? And you documented those questions. And then you ask the client, are you satisfied with the answers to this question? And the client must write an answer, yes, I am satisfied with that question. Uh, they asked about uh, liquidity, or they asked about how much could this portfolio lose, or is there any guarantee to this product? Is this in the market, or is this a fixed product? Um, all these questions, and if you document those questions, and then the client attests, yes, I'm satisfied with those answers, and they sign it, would that be a little bit like a black box? Would that help hold them accountable? So when something goes awry, we have a fair playing field, that it's not his word against your word, that, oh, no, 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 you never said that to me. Well, yes, I did. And you, you actually signed, you attested to that information. How about this? What features of the products were discussed? We talked about the income rider. We talked about illiquidity. We talked about distributions could change. We talked about uh, surrender charge periods. We talked about caps. We talked about all of these things. Client, do you understand this? Here is your time before you sign this contract with me to make sure that you understand these features. Do you understand these? Well, yes, I do, John. Great. I need you to sign right here. I need you to attest to me that you understand these features because we're dealing in a crazy world right now where people are getting sued and blaming financial advisors for stuff that they should have known at the time of purchase. Because if you go back to lesson number two, we talked about this Wilbank Securities investor who was awarded a million dollars over this misleading sales pitch on the variable annuity. They, the, the arbitration committee or arbitration panel came out and said the client got less than 7% compounded annual return promised by the firm when she bought the variable annuity. Well, it was an income rider. If the client had signed right here that they understand that feature, they understand the income rider, would they have been able to sue that firm and go to arbitration and get a million bucks over that uh, variable annuity income rider? I don't think so. So we've got to look about protecting ourselves. How about a common sense strategy? I always laughed about this one, something that I've always thought of. Why don't they make the airplanes out of the same material that they make the little black boxes out of? You know, back in the good old days, this is what police officers looked like. They were there to protect and serve. They were there to help the community. But more and more when we look at police officers today, this is what they look like. Times have changed. The world has changed. Things are riskier today than ever before. This is what happens to police officers. They need those shields. You imagine Barney Fife walking up to a high-risk solution wearing this. No, this is what we need today. This is what we have to brace for impact. This is the market from the start of the year. People are concerned people are worried they need to uh, get answers and if they don't like what happens they're more apt to blame file complaints 
and the regulations that are going on in our industry right now puts more and more responsibility on you. You need to brace for impact. So I'm going to conclude right here with lesson number three. There are only two people in that cockpit. You must act accordingly. Document, document, document. Get your client's signatures on your documentation. Putting some meeting notes in a CRM system isn't going to help you one bit. It's still your word against the clients. And if it's your word against someone who lost money, your arbitration is not going to go very well. Your client complaint is not going to go very well. You are guilty until proven innocent. You better have some great documentation if you're going to do business in 2018. I would also say you better have documentation in addition to what you give your broker dealer. Why? Because if something gets ugly, there's a good chance you're going to be terminated from your broker dealer. They're not going to be on your side. They're not going to stand with you in court. They're going to throw you under that bus. You better be able to have documentation that you're not calling back to the firm to ask them for copies of applications or copies of this or copies of that. You better have your own documentation in addition to what your broker dealer or your FMO or your RIA is requiring. You need that. It's special forces time. It's commando time. It's SWAT team. You need to not be out there practicing like Barney Fife. And I promise you, I promise you, three minutes, four minutes with every single client will sometime within the next 10 years save you $100,000 in legal fees. And it might save your career. There are only two people in that cockpit, you and your client. You need to share this responsibility. They need to have some accountability. You need to document what's going on. You need to plan accordingly. You need to be that little black box. You need to have that strategy in place to document everything you do with your clients to give them some accountability. So again, thank you for tuning in. This is lesson three in a five-part series with Compliance Commando, five lessons you must learn from the movie Sully. We'll be back with you soon with lesson number four. Uh, any questions you have, please comment, reach out to us directly. That accountability tool that you saw with the signatures from the client, we have that available to uh, our, our clients, our customers. Let us know if you're interested in something like that. We'll let you know how it works. We'll be back to you soon with lesson number four. Thanks for tuning in. Reach out to us at compliancecommando.com. We got your back. We're in this together. It's scary times. Let's take the extra steps we need to protect ourselves and go out there and provide great service to our clients. Thank you for joining us.